kimberly.com and tonight I'm going to show you a stellar dessert that is perfect for any time of year but really great for the holidays especially. This is how to bake pomegranate pavlova. Now if you've never had pavlova before this is a real treat. Pavlova is a whole bunch of egg whites and it's cooked sort of like a meringue and so in a shape you try and make it like it's like a cake sort of and you're going to cook it on a low temperature bake it in the oven and it's going to get dried out on the outside maybe even a little bit cracked and on the inside it's this marshmallowy deliciousness and then you top it with whipped cream you don't have to do that but you can we're going to do that top it with whipped cream and fruit and tonight we're using these beautiful pomegranates i got at harvest barn country markets make sure you get out to one of those locations and get them they have beautiful pomegranates huge big ones like this they are so sweet so delicious and such a beautiful color perfect for the holidays thanksgiving or christmas you're gonna love this recipe okay you can find them either in niagara on the lake or in st catherine's at either one of their locations okay so right now I'm just getting together some super fine sugar. If you can't find super fine sugar at your store, you can make it yourself. This is just regular granulated sugar and I'm going to put it in my food processor. I need two cups plus two tablespoons worth of super fine sugar. So put it in your food processor. If you've never done this, I know it might sound a little strange, that's how you do it. Now I'm going to turn this on high and I'm just going to get it down to, it's going to look sort of like icing sugar. It's just going to be much more fine than what you have right here, all right? Two minutes on the highest speed of your processor will do it. And it has so a beautiful sight. So this is light, powdery, super fine sugar. That's what you've got, okay? All right, into my bowl. So I'm prepared with my ingredients. And let's get our standing mixer out. Um, you can do this with a hand mixer if you like, but it's way easier with a standing mixer. I'm gonna use a whisk attachment today, so see you in a second. All right, I've got my standing mixer with a whisk attachment. I have six eggs that I need to separate, the eggs and yolks. So we're only gonna whip the egg whites. The yolks can be saved in your refrigerator for another recipe. So I like to use my fingers because I feel like that always works best. So I'm gonna use one little bowl to catch the uh, egg yolk. Egg white, sorry. And you want to make sure that you get no egg yolk. So I like to um, put the egg white into a small bowl first to make sure that no egg yolk has gotten into it. It's just how I do it. Use whatever method works best for you. This also ensures that you don't get any shells stuck in. Alright, so save your little egg yolks for something else. And the colder the better. The colder the bowl, the colder the beater the better this works. So we're going to whip okay. these egg whites and we're going to whip them I would say about halfway. We're looking for soft peaks before we start adding any of these other ingredients, okay? We have a little bit of cornstarch, we have the, some icing sugar, that super fine sugar that we just made, some vinegar and some vanilla, okay? So let's start whipping. All right, I think that we're there. Let's just see what's going on here. Yep, we have some soft peaks forming. Let me show you. And that's all you have. Just little peaks that are sort of holding and sort of not. So on a very low speed, one tablespoon at a time, I'm going to add the icing sugar until it's gone and then some of the super fine sugar. So a very low speed. Just want to add this. Sprinkle it lightly. Make sure that this icing sugar is sifted. We're using one cup of sifted icing sugar. You want to make sure that your bowl and your beaters, everything that you're using is grease free. You don't want um, grease with your egg whites because that's going to weigh them down and it's not going to let them puff up the way you want, okay? Keep everything washed thoroughly with soapy water. We need this to be light and fluffy, not collapsing. I'm just waiting till the last tablespoon that I added mixes through, stirs through a bit. This is on the lowest speed. And then I'm going to add more. All right, my icing sugar has all gone in. I'm going to start adding a little bit of this super fine sugar really slowly, sprinkle it over top. When about half of this is all added, the sugars, um, I'm going to increase the speed a little bit. Now this is two cups plus two tablespoons of the super fine sugar. Okay, I've added about half of this super fine sugar now. I'm going to increase the speed slightly to finish adding it, still one tablespoon at a time. Scrape down the sides of the bowl if necessary. You're gonna see that your um, egg mixture here, egg white mixture, is starting to get nice and glossy, and that's exactly what you want. You have to get this sugar mixed in. That's very important. The rest of the sugar, all my sugar is added now. However, my meringue is likely a little bit gritty. Just grab a little bit between your fingers, pinch it, and rub it. If it's still gritty, you still need to go a little bit longer. 
So it should still be glossy, but be able to hold peaks and is non-gritty. So we're gonna go a little while longer until that happens. Okay, so that went for about five or seven minutes on my highest speed. And you're gonna see uh, that it's much less gritty between your fingers, and you're gonna form nice stiff peaks. So we'll show you that, and this is what you're looking for. Nice, thick, glossy, beautiful stuff going on, okay? So I'm quickly going to stir in some vanilla extract. Make sure you use vanilla extract, not the artificial vanilla, because that's made with byproducts of making paper, paper industry, not cool. So a half a teaspoon of vanilla, I'm using my good vanilla today, and we're just going to stir this in. All right, so let's take this out of here. We have some other things to do quickly before we um, get this all onto our baking sheet. Okay, so I have a baking sheet with parchment, and I've measured the size of my cake stand, and it's 10 inches across. So what I've done is I took half of that, um, as a radius, I put some kitchen string that I cut, measured it out in, with a skewer on one end and a pencil on the other. And I drew a round circle, pretty much, of um, how big my cake stand is. You can see that there. So I'm going to actually put that upside down now. You're going to be able to still see it through your parchment, but you don't want it in your food and your lead, right? So that's how we do that to measure. Mom came out to help me, so she gets the beaters. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sift three quarters of a tablespoon of cornstarch. You don't want any chunks. And I'm just going to sift that over top of my meringue here, just to make sure that there's no chunks. This is also going to help thicken it and stabilize it. And we're going to fold that in with some vinegar, believe it or not, white vinegar. We're going to use one and a half teaspoons of vinegar. And we're going to fold that in gently. You don't want to collapse your egg whites at all. Preheat your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and I have it on my convection setting. All right, so now you're going to be brave, and you're going to dump it right in the center of your circle, and you're going to form a lovely mound, and you're going to try and make it in the shape of a cake. So I just keep piling in the center, that's the easiest, and then we'll form it after that. I'm just building as high as I can here because I don't want it to go too much further. Make sure you're looking at your circle. Move quickly because this will start moving out on you a little bit. And I'm just going to try and even it out on the edges a little bit. So it's a little, um, it's kind of a flatter top so I can put my whipped cream and my pomegranate arrows on later. Doesn't that look beautiful? And I'm going to get this all right, looks good, eh, Mom? Mm -hmm. Into the oven it goes, quickly, quickly. Okay, I've turned my oven up to 300 degrees just because I'm gonna let that go for about 10 minutes on 300, then I'm gonna turn it down to finish. This is gonna take an hour or an hour and 20 minutes. You're gonna look for it to be a light, pale, golden color. It's gonna be dry on the outside. It may even be cracked and that's cool. It's all good. Whipped cream's gonna go in there and the whole nine yards. The inside is gonna be marshmallowy and delicious. And uh, we'll see you and I guess in an hour. Okay, let me show you this pavlova. It's been cooling for a little while. I turned it off. So this is what it looks like when it was done. It's a light golden color. It's crispy crunchy on the outside. It's gonna be so awesome, I can't wait. So now you're gonna turn off your oven. You're gonna leave the oven door ajar and you're gonna let that pavlova completely cool. Okay, we're gonna whip up some cream. We're gonna open up our pomegranate and get the seeds out and get prepared. All right, so we're gonna whip some cream to top it. And we're gonna serve it with the pomegranates on top of that. It's gonna look beautiful, right? So what you wanna do is make sure you have a nice clean bowl, clean beaters, um, nice cold whipping cream, one cup's worth. If you could even have the bowl and the beaters cold, it's even better. So we're gonna start with that. That's going in my bowl. I'm gonna use a hand mixer just for ease of use. So I have three heaping tablespoons of icing sugar that I'm going to add about halfway through whipping. You're gonna see that as you're moving your beaters through, you're just gonna make lines and it's actually gonna kind of hold. You don't want it all the way. I'm also going to prelude this with, don't go too far with your whipping cream. If it's starting to make nice peaks, you gotta stop, okay? If you go too far, it's gonna get nice and big and fluffy, it's gonna be huge, and then all of a sudden it's gonna go like that, within two seconds, it's gonna be sweet cream butter. And that's definitely not what you wanna put on your pavlova butter. 
So we need to whip this up, so just keep your eye on it, don't go too, too far. All right, so halfway, we're gonna whip this. Okay, you're gonna see that your cream has thickened, but I ha don't have peaks yet, that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon, and I'm gonna stir it in on a lower speed. Add some more. Stir it in. Add a bit more. And add the rest. Now finish whipping it up. You're gonna see that it's forming nice lines through there. I might let it go just a couple seconds longer. I want it to be nice and stiff peaks this time. Good stuff. So that looks good. Share the beaters with someone you love. So let me show you the uh, consistency. Nice, big, fluffy clouds of whipped cream, okay? So keep that cold until you're ready to get this on the pavlova, until you're serving dessert. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get my pomegranate um, arrows out. Arrow is just, just another word for seed. However, with pomegranate, inside those little red arrows is a seed. So we can't call it the same thing, I guess. A lot of people do call it a seed. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this top stem part and I'm going to just cut around it to open this up. I don't want seeds that are bleeding. I don't want them open and all juicy, and that's gonna wreck my pretty white colored pavlova. So I want to very gently remove these seeds out of here as best I can. I start from one end. You might get a couple juicy ones. Just eat those yourself. And then save the other ones in a bowl to top this. Now I don't know how much I'm gonna need. I want at least probably a cup and a half's worth, I would say, of beautiful pomegranate arrows, and it's just gonna look so divine. You can see how this would be a perfect dessert for the holidays with the red and the white. Beautiful, right? All right, so let me get cracking on these guys. So I'm just peeling that skin apart, and you're gonna see that different chambers kind of open up as you start peeling, okay? Just be gentle. I just love pomegranate. I think it's a very underused fruit. It's a super fruit. It's good for all kinds of things. It's full of all kinds of vitamins and uh, things that are good for you. You gotta eat. Okay, so I have my pomegranate arrows all out. My whipped cream is ready, and this is completely cool. Now we need to remove this to my cake butter, and I'm just gonna use a spatula to unstick it from my parchment if it is a little bit stuck. And we're gonna do our best to move it to our cake platter in one piece. So I'm going to try and do it this way. And I'm just going to slide it off the parchment. Perfect. And voila, it fits my cake stand perfectly. So that's what you've got. And it's supposed to be cracked in like this. You know, that's what happens to it. It's so beautiful. All right, so look how perfect that is. Yay. Okay, you could serve it slice by slice and let people put their whipped cream or you can put it on and their seeds, but I'm going to do the whole thing and just make it beautiful. So, let's pile our whipped cream in the center and move it on out to the sides. Let it just a little bit come over the sides, kind of like a drifts of snow. So we have it all like snow drifts coming off the sides. And now, you're just gonna sprinkle it with your pomegranate seeds. All over the top. Be as generous as you like with the pomegranate. And that is a gorgeous dessert. Check this out. There you have it. Look at that. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? This gorgeous, crunchy meringue. The inside's gonna be gooey marshmallowy. You have this light, fluffy whipped cream and these nice, tangy, sweet pomegranate arrows. Boy, what a gorgeous dessert. And something a little bit different than people are expecting for the holidays. So, you're just gonna be brave again, and you're going to just slice in here. It may not be a perfect slice, and that's fine. That's what pavlova is about. So you're just gonna cut it like a pie. Oh, what a gorgeous dessert. Let's pick one out. Oh, man, that looks beautiful. Well, the first piece of anything is the hardest to get out, and we did a beautiful job here. It came out pretty darn easy. What a lovely, lovely dessert. Now, grab yourself some extra um, pomegranate arrows, scatter them about the plate for people, just for a little something extra, and that's one heck of a dessert. Look at that. Man, wait till you see what it tastes like. Look at that. Oh, 
If I got this at someone's holiday feast, I would be so impressed, I can't even lie. Now, the only thing left to do is to try it. Ready? Oh, it's nice and crispy on the outside. Mmm. Mm. Great texture. Mmm. Pomegranate arrows are such a treat when someone actually takes them all out of the pomegranate for you. Because they're really tasty, but you want to have a bunch of them. And usually when you're just peeling it and eating it yourself, it's just one little bit at a time. It's nice to be able to get a nice amount of them. The meringue is outrageously good. It's crispy. Mm. It's light. It's fluffy. The whipped cream, of course, is fantastic. Look at this. you got to really get after it to get in there. Oh, I love that. What a fantastic dessert. Mmm. Mmm. The center is marshmallowy. Boy. Mmm. I love this. Oh, you could do this with any kind of fruit. It'd be a nice treat for any kind of holiday. Even Easter. It'd be beautiful for a birthday cake. I would love that as a birthday cake. Mm. I'm gonna show you this. Look at this all inside here. Oh, yeah. You got a nice hole in here. Pomegranates even fell in there. Look at that. Oh, it's gooey on the inside. Mmm. Mmm. The sweet and tanginess of the pomegranates cuts the sweetness. It's so beautiful. What a contrast of color, too. You could do that with kiwis. You could do that with berries. You could do this. It's typically done with strawberries. Anything would be nice on there. Oh, I love this. Well, I can't wait to serve everybody else. They're all waiting too. And uh, make sure you get out to Harvest Barn Country Markets for some beautiful Palm Wonderful pomegranates. That's where they came from. You can also buy these little um, Palm Wonderful arrow seeds already taken out of the pomegranate for you in little cups. They're available there at Harvest Barn as well. So make sure you check them out online at harvestbarn.ca or go to one of their locations, either Niagara-on-the-Lake or St. Catharines. You're going to be happy you did. Anyway, that's what inspired this beautiful dessert tonight. I hope that you try this one time, um, and you'll be trying it again and again and again after that. Beautiful dessert. Absolutely stellar. Such a conversation piece. Really impressive. Anyhow, that's how you do it. That's how you bake a pomegranate pavlova. That's how you do it. All right. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly. YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. And you can find me syndicated on Roku. Come to my website at CookingWithKimberly.com and subscribe. Interact with us and let us know what's going down in your culinary world. All right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.